Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today are Dean McMurray and David Strickle, the stream of David. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Walt, you're on mute. It's doing it again. I was say, I'm, I'm still getting used to this thing, I'm telling you. Well, David Strickle is joining us again. And David, it's been a while since we had you on here, but well, yeah, it's good to be back. It's good yeah. to see a picture of me with my old long beard. That's right. Yeah, you, you trimmed it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I did. Good, though. My, sum, my summer beard. My <laughs> Your summer beard. Probably it's already 100 degrees outside here. Well, it's always 100 degrees outside there, isn't it? Usually. Usually, yeah. I mean, that's just that's half the year. Half the half year. Half the year, yeah. The other half it gets to like ninety six. <laughs> no, we actually we have uh, we got into the forties a little bit around Christmas, uh, December, January. It gets mm -hmm. chilly. Yeah, not cold, mm -hmm. but chilly. Okay, cool. Um, I'm I'm going to actually try to clear something here, so hopefully it doesn't screw anything up. This the the streamyard behaves funny on the machine, so if I go away for a second, don't be screwed up here. Okay, yeah, that worked. Cool. Okay, now I can see you guys. I was just still seeing the intro. The intro wouldn't go away for me. <laughs> no, I like the new intro, by the way. I haven't seen that. That was really, uh, that's nice. Yeah, I've been doing some work on that, but that's, the, uh, it's been a big project lately. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, we're going to do some uh, streaming with the stream of David. We're going to uh, take questions. So if you're tuning in on the live stream, you want to have a question asked, uh, by all means, this is like talking to Abraham. It's like talking to Abraham Hicks, uh, but without having to buy the ticket to one of their workshops. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it's, it, I don't know, Dean, if, if you ever tuned into any of our previous episodes when David was on, on a weekly basis. It's a very interesting experience talking to the stream because it, it's kind of like what David has explained himself. It's very, very similar to the kinds of answers that you get from Abraham Hicks. But uh, David, you, you'll correct me if I'm not saying this exactly right. The, the stream is kind of like a more gritty down to earth answer than Abraham. It gets into some of the, the areas of what it's like living in polarity in ways that Abraham kind of dances around a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and it's kind of, um, it, I mean, it, it just, the stream just doesn't hesitate to deal with any issue. Abraham will try to always redirect you back to higher vibration. The stream says, okay, let's go after this thing. Which yeah, is we're sort of more about digging into the low vibration stuff and, and yeah. viewing it differently and sort of transmuting that to something positive ultimately. Yeah, but oh yeah. Not, not hiding from it or yeah. bypassing as some people like to say. With, with bypassing, right. That, that came up as a topic. I didn't know that word. Actually, Debbie taught me that word. Oh, she did? Oh, okay. I'd never heard of it uh, until yeah. years ago, yeah. No, I'd heard of it. Amy Blackford was actually talking about it on Monday, and I asked for her, her definition of it. Um, and I'm, I'm still not clear what the definition is, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> well, I used, to, I used to talk about rainbows and fairy dust. You know? Okay. I love rainbows and fairy dust. I think it's yeah, great. But sure. you know, we've all got stuff that are less than that that we deal with. And once we deal with it, and take the the fear and judgment out of it, which is my answer to everything. Uh, then it's there's there's nothing to drag your vibe down anymore. It's about cleaning up the stuff that does drag your vibe down, so your your general vibe is higher. Now, of course, uh, Dean and I have been doing uh, some psychic experiments the last couple of weeks, and we are going to get back to that uh, starting next week. But when David said he was ready to come onto the show after what three or four months off, yeah, I mean, we really had to go along with that one. So. Um, and oh, and there's Amy. She, Amy's tuned in. So hello, Amy. Um, and uh, so Dean, uh, I want to invite you, like anybody yeah. on the live stream, if you have anything that you want to ask uh, the stream when, sure. when we hook in there, by all means, jump right in there. Um, David, unless you got something you wanted to bring up, I wanted to do some talking with the stream today. So, I mean, is there anything that you want to tell the audience about? Do you have anything coming up that might be of interest? Uh, yeah, I actually do have something to to plug, as I always do. <laughs> sure, yeah. Let's put those. Uh, we, we have a live there. this Saturday. Uh, oh, cool. this Saturday we're doing uh, a summit on Zoom, so it's not going to be broadcast anywhere. And it's going to be, you, it's funny that you mentioned the Abraham workshop. It's going to be our first live uh, workshop where you can come into a Zoom meeting and uh, ticket holders will be chosen randomly to converse face-to-face -face with the stream. So as oh, much as people are sharing in this format, it will be like what you get to do here where you can ask a question and then when their answer doesn't make sense, you can ask a follow-up question <laughs> and have a conversation back and forth for clarity. Yeah. And plus just spend, it's four hours. So spend four hours in that super high vibration of the stream. The Taya Masters are all going to be on with me. 
And it's just going to be a fantastic four-hour event. We're going to take two breaks, uh, and, you know, interspersed in the middle of it. But it's going to be almost four hours of channeling, mostly just the stream Q and A. And as always, nothing's off limits. You can ask about anything that you want, and they will certainly bring up anything. As you you were touching on uh, the, the nitty gritty, I was on a live on uh, I do Instagram live uh, every week now at eight a.m. Mm -hmm. Pacific, and this question was asked. And I have a little bit of an awareness, but not always, you know, when I'm channeling. And all of a sudden, they're talking about abortion. Oh, my goodness. And I was like, in the background, I'm kind of like, oh, my God, why are they going to abortion? Like, what is this? You know, it could go downhill so fast. And, but it was, you know, it was a nice interaction. Everybody loved what was shared, and it ended up fine, of course. And then after I get off of that, one of my boot campers, one of the people in my program, messaged me and said that she was had a question about that that she didn't ask. And that 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 came up. It doesn't shock either one of you, I know, but I, I still think it's cool when that kind of thing happens. I mm -hmm. think it's very cool when that kind of thing happens. For yeah, sure. yeah, that's fabulous. So that's it. I'm plugging my workshop. I think you have a link that we can post. Uh, Carrie's going to send it to you. Uh, oh, cool. You post in the comments uh, that they can join. Yeah. Um, and and get their ticket and come to the event. So it's this Saturday. Uh, August is August, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> well, this is August. And we definitely have April, a time problem. It feels like here. August. <laughs> April 17th from 9 a.m. Pacific to 1 p.m. Pacific. Very good. All right. Something to look forward to. And I do recommend it. Anybody who's tuning in, um, either our regular podcast listeners, somebody listening on the live stream, whatever, I really recommend those conversations with the stream because I had the privilege to do them for a few months last year. And Oh my goodness! Well, it's, it's very different than talking to me. I'm just a guy, but you know, they they have some. Well, well, talking to you is good. I mean, let's not downplay that part. That part's really good, you know. But talking every to the stream. I mean, every time I get on here, he's like, "Oh, Tate, do you have anything? Because we want you out of here. We want." <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Fine. Nobody likes me. Everybody wants to stream. That's, that's Tell us what you really think. Time. Come on, now. the way that I do. So I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> All right. And by the way, once again, I want to encourage people who are live streaming, if you have a question, put it into the comments section. I will bring it into the conversation. Um, but uh, let's let's start streaming. So we'll, sure. we'll say goodbye to David and hello to the stream in about a minute. Yeah. So uh, the only little disclaimer I do before I get into this is that the only limitation you can ask anything that you want. Uh, we're limited to my vocabulary and intellect because I yes. need to understand the question. Again, they're not going to tell you how to perform surgery step by step. Uh, they can show me that stuff, but I have no idea how to. <laughs> um, and it needs to be in English. Uh, that would help, and, yes. And the only other thing that really helps is that we all do a little quick meditation. I know we're uh, mm. time limited here, but I'm yeah. super high vibing today. So bringing them in will be, they're already here. Let's be honest. Um, I will bring them in. You'll know when they're here. And then you can just start asking questions. But it's good for us to set an intention together collectively just to have a fantastic interaction with the stream and, and mm -hmm. to lift everyone's vibe in the process. Absolutely. So we'll right back. That's not a hard intention to set either, I have to say. That's a really easy one. Um, while the uh, stream is connecting, it usually takes about 30 seconds or so. I just want to remind people. Uh, also, you can send in questions and so forth for when we're doing um, the show uh, for future episodes because David's going to come back at, uh, for a future episode. And take advantage of that to send in questions. So the next time the stream is on, if you didn't get a question this time, you can get a question next time. We are here. Hello, stream. It's been a while, but we're really glad to have you here. Thank you for taking the time and you know, being willing to share your collective source energy wisdom with us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, I want to start us off on a topic that I've kind of given a lot of thought to over the last months. I mean, we, we touched on it a little bit here on the podcast, but not terribly often. But it's a question that I see it a lot in, you know, questions that people ask on Facebook and social media. Uh, and I think it kind of is on the minds of a lot of people. How much time it can take before something manifests. And the way people usually express it is in terms of patience. How do you, how do you be patient while you're waiting for something to happen. Um, now, in context, I'll also bring in what Abraham Hicks has at least on one occasion said about this. They've said they aren't really fans of the word patience. They always try to redirect back to vibration and raising your vibration and not focus on the patience aspect too much. Uh, but nevertheless, we humans being who we are, we tend to do that anyway. So I figured let's give the stream a chance to tell us how do you view the whole question of patience? The, the 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 idea of of manifestations in in linear time we will begin by explaining that 
you are perceiving your experience on earth in linear time. So we will refer to linear time, though we are of consciousness and, and, and there is no time in our perspective. So the, the process of creation is the same for everything. We refer to this very often as the universal process of creation. And this universal process of creation comes via vibrational flow. And you are all aware of your vibrational flow. You are all aware that your vibration sometimes is up and sometimes it's a bit lower and via your projected thoughts can move about quite a bit. But even without your projected thoughts, without your operating system that you have created for yourself based on everything that you've experienced in your lifetime, polarity is going to take your vibration on this up and down journey. This is why there are times that, that you wake up and you, you feel that you're in higher vibration. You feel joyful. You feel abundant. You, you spring out of bed. And there are times that you wake up and something heavy is, is weighing upon you and you're really focused on that and you feel the, the lethargy of that. And this vibrational flow is something that we are not necessarily guiding you away from, but we are guiding you to operate your lives in harmony with your own natural vibrational flow. Because this vibrational flow exists to, to give you this mix of positive and negative experiences that create your lives. And, and, and we are always guiding you to find appreciation for your obstacles. Because the idea of, of never having any obstacles and never having any challenges leads to this idea that you're supposed to be living some sort of perfection here on earth. Yet there is zero evidence of, of any one of you living perfection. Even the most celebrated among you are, are not living in perfection because the obstacles are there to inspire your new creation. And in what you create next in your bubble of reality is your new creation. And, and that creates your expansion as a human being and as a soul consciousness being eternally. So now that we, we've touched a bit on vibrational flow, we will return to your original question. The, the idea of how long something takes to manifest is regulated by vibrational flow somewhat, because there are things that you are all able to manifest instantaneously. The, the, the serendipitous interaction with strangers, the, the parking spaces, the, the just walking out and communing with nature and, and seeing a bird that you've been thinking of, the easy things come, come very swiftly. Mm -hmm. But the more difficult things, the things that you perhaps believe that you need to experience joy, the things that you consider big, very much rooted in human judgment, human programming, if you will. The, the more money, the bigger houses, the, the job titles, the satisfying relationships, the, 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 the healing from health crisis, all of these things mm -hmm. that you consider big, you are thinking about them more often. So you are therefore thinking about them through this up and down vibrational flow. So you are the ones that are holding these manifestations away. But understand that, that we are not judging that process and we are guiding you not to judge your holding away of your bigger manifestations. That process exists to allow you to create a more perfect version of whatever it is that you're creating. This is why very often the things that you want the most take the longest to manifest and the bigger things in your lives do take longer to manifest. So you, you begin manifesting something, you are up your spiral, you are believing it, you're trusting it, it's absolutely on its way and your vibration drops just a little bit for whatever reason, your focus or polarity or a combination of those two things. And then you revisit the topic. And inevitably, when you revisit the topic a little bit further down your spiral, that impatience may set in. Okay. That where is it? Why is it taking so long? Why am I, what am I doing wrong? How am I broken vibrationally? Why is this not coming? And then you spiral on down from there sometimes. But the downward spiral creates the fracturing, if not the destruction of your desire. But in the fracturing of it and the, in, in the believing that you're manifesting something and then seeing evidence of it not coming, not allowing that to be your stopping point, this is where many of you get it wrong. If there's a getting it wrong, they're, they're <laughs> getting it wrong. But the, the going down in vibration and having your desire blow up in your face, and you've all had this happen, 
and then you return back to step one and, and, and deem this process not worthy or, or, or deem it inaccurate. The key is to recognize that the fracturing of your creation is allowing you to create a more perfect version of it. It is, it is it's drawing out the flaws. It is drawing out the imperfections. It is drawing out things that you then get to decide whether you wish to move forward with or not. Think of a new romantic relationship when you meet someone and you you are there is high attraction. You're very excited. You are only seeing the best, and you have the butterflies and all of these things going on. That is the high vibrational first point of creation. Then a little time goes by, the vibration drops, and you begin seeing the flaws. And then you build momentum in that direction. You begin noticing more and more and more flaws. And then you have a choice to continue in that relationship in spite of the flaws and uh, and actually show appreciation for them and allow your vibration to go back up or to stop, to end the relationship and start all over again, or perhaps not manifest another one. This process is the process of creation for all things. There are times when it's very efficient because you are not placing so much pressure on it. A serendipitous interaction with a stranger at the supermarket is an easy manifestation for most of you. Yet you're controlling the behavior of other people. That is huge. You are, you are controlling the behavior. And by controlling the behavior, we mean you are aligning with others who are also in a state of joy in the moment. That is how you are controlling it. You, you, are, you are actually controlling what you're encountering, what you're experiencing. That works on all topics of creation. But the bigness of certain creations slow things down. And the slowing down of the process very often is your creation so that you can manifest an even better version of and ready yourselves for it. It is, it is a natural process. Excellent. And uh, one of the listeners in the live stream team heard, um, found another way to express the same concept. It's like when you are creating a clay dish and it seems perfect and then you fire it and it cracks or it allows you to see the flaw. Pretty much what you were saying just now, Sprit Stream. Indeed, that is the process of creation. If you begin thinking about everything that you're wanting to create in your experience as that, appreciating the vibrational flow and appreciating the process of creation, you will find your manifestations will actually start occurring faster in your time because you are now understanding the process and and the the, the, the cracked clay pot is, is, is simply something that you start over again and create a better version of. Yep. Um, by the way, I also want to reiterate for people who are tuning in, who had uh, kind of come into the middle of this, this is uh, the stream of David. It's kind of like talking to Abraham. If you have a question that you'd like us to ask uh, and you're listening to the live stream, include it in the comments section and we will be glad to include it. Um, actually, Nasha had a question and I'll, I'll toss it up on the screen here. Um, she said, well, let's go to the first one. She says, is there a time frame?" And by that she said, whoops, I mean, I just attracted a perfect vacation, for instance. The, the, the time frame is only going to be regulated via your understanding and appreciation of your creation process, your vibrational flow. So once you stop going back to step one, and, and, and many of you may be well beyond this in your creation process and your understanding of the creation process, once you stop that, that habit that perhaps you have, of believing that it's all over when you don't get the phone call, you don't get the job, you don't get the mortgage, you don't get the bid on the house, whatever it is, believing that it's all over, showing appreciation for whatever manifests as a best possible outcome. And then understanding that that simply means that the universe is creating something even bigger for you. Holding on to that belief system, making that your bubble of reality, eagerly awaiting the universe to delight you. And, and, and being that general with your desires will deliver what you would consider an amazing life experience by anyone's standards. And uh, let me follow that up by asking, okay, so does that mean that you are suggesting that people um, set goals with timelines or avoid timelines? The, the, the idea of timeline, again, is a very, uh, a, a very earthbound human idea. You, you are operating in linear time. The, the, the timeline of perfection, meaning when you're in alignment with the universe and the universe is, is sending you all of the things that you need to create exactly what you want, the universe is essentially creating it for you on your behalf. 
and allowing that to be what it is. The, 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 the purpose of your timelines or your goals very often is rooted in a being's desire to take action. Mm-hmm. The, the, the lack of belief that you're going to be motivated to take action without a deadline. And, and, and when David was in the corporate world, he operated that way very much. He waited to the last minute to create everything. And when he placed himself under that pressure, actually enjoyed the pressure, communed with us and created brilliantly that way. So that it can serve you depending on your bubble of reality. If you're using that timeline as an expectation to kick yourselves into gear in your creative process from a high vibrational perspective, meaning being above neutral in your higher vibrational register because you know that you're going to create this thing within that time frame, that is a positive way to utilize a goal or your, your timeline. But if it becomes a ticking time bomb, where you are fearing it and you're fearing the arrival of it, you are holding yourselves apart from the creative energy of the universe. And, 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 and things can, that, that ticking time bomb, as you all know, can explode. You can, you can forget about the, the goal altogether, begin to ignore it or move the goalpost out, if you will, and, and never get there. So it depends on an, an individual's belief system. If you've created a belief system where setting a goal motivates you to get it done and it raises your vibration and you get it done and that works for you, then it works for you. You are all individuals. There is no one size fits all teaching to any of this. The only one size fits all is the universal process of creation, that, which you refer to very often as universal law. That is the one size fits all. But how you as a human being go about applying that in your 3D reality is an individual belief system journey. So Brenda's following up on uh, the point that you made about that habit. So so how do you get out of that habit, especially when you know what you need to raise your vibe on, but you, you don't know, but, but you don't do it or you can't do it? Ch- changing any habit is changing a vibration. So the, the, the art of changing a vibration is being habitual in your desire and your alignment with changing the vibration. Un- understand that you have all done this. You, you have all wanted to accomplish something that you believed at one time you could not possibly accomplish, yet you created a belief system for yourselves that you could if you did X, Y, and Z. And then in that bubble of reality, you do X, Y, and Z, and you then accomplish the thing that you once believed you could not. So you have created a new vibrational signature and done the things that you believe that you need to do based on all of your 3D teachings and moved into that vibration and had that come to be. You all have experiences such as this. It, it, it is it, The teachings of humanity very often are, go against the grain of universal law <laughs> because there are a lot of control factors in that. Mm. But when you see what does indeed work for you from your 3D teachings and build upon that to move into beyond 3D teachings, be- begin to align yourselves with universal law and your vibrational flow, you can train yourselves the same way. The way that your belief system was developed via that method, you can redevelop it. So uh, now Nasha is following up on your theme about the uh, relationships. You were using relationships as an example. She says she found two guys, but it didn't work out. Um, big manifestation says, who the person is, but my heart gets weird. Don't know how to explain it. And then she follows up by saying, my heart is looking for someone. I don't know who, but I'm sure he's out there. The, the, the advice that we always give, and we are asked this question frequently, is, is to work on your opinion of you and loving you more first. Hmm. Because when you get into that vibration of, of loving you unconditionally and appreciating you and feeling your worthiness of all that is, and it is there, it is present, it is in you. But when you find that vibration within yourselves, you are then aligning with another who is going to have the same opinion of themselves and of you. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. That's also a favorite topic of ours here on the show lately. We've been talking a lot about building up self-confidence and, and self-love and the power that, that that activity plays in terms of producing the vibration that we're looking for and producing results that we're looking for. Um, and then uh, I've also been tying it into the concept of social connectedness, building social connections. And, and I've been suggesting that the, the two together um, are they create a, a pretty powerful combination for getting that vibration into the place that you want to be in. So 
now that I've uh, put my theory out there, tear it apart. Uh, am I am I on the right track here? <laughs> the, the, the the moving into the vibration of worthiness and self love is is raising your vibration because you all have your version of this. We flow through all creation. We we flow to all of you. You all have your version of that which David calls the stream source energy flowing through you. It is in you. You you, you are pre equipped with it. You are never without it. You, you, your ego serves to separate it, that that consciousness from you from time to time. That serves the purpose, however, of you having the human experience of you separating yourselves from your worthiness and separating yourselves from safety and security and all of these things that you believe that you need so that you can spin out and have these human experiences, experience both wanted and unwanted aspects of your world, and then create solutions from there. You, your lives are a series of solutions. And in your solutions, you create new things that expands your world. It expands your lives. It expands the entire universe in your new creation. That is the purpose of physical life is new creation, expansion of, of, of the, the multiplication, expansion of the energy that is source. So it is part of all of you and stepping into your worthiness of that aligns you with our connection. Because we feel that way about you always, regardless of your behavior in, in 3D, in, in, in your human form. We are not judging any of it. We are unconditional love for you. So when you raise your vibration in harmony with our vibration that is always present, you become unstoppable. Because you are in the vicinity of new thought creation. We have established for teaching purposes this baseline called neutrality. Everything above neutral is, is source connection and everything below neutral is less than that, all the way down to complete disconnection from our energy, where you were really down there beating yourselves up and perhaps others. When you are above this line of neutrality, you are capable of new thought creation. That is why we are often referred to as source. Your intuition, your new ideas, your solutions to your problems all reside up there. When you allow yourselves to drop below that, and you all do naturally, there is no cure for that. That is part of being a physical being. Mm -hmm. You are no longer thinking new thoughts or creating anything new. You are recycling. You are going back into fearful memories, going That's back so into the trauma, going back into what didn't work last time. And your ego is building this little wall saying never again. You very often do that in financial situations and with relationships, mm -hmm. because those tend to be things that you hold so dearly, believing that you need those things to be joyful in your world. The key to, to solving that is to understand the vibration of need will always be met by the universe with yes. When you are in the vibration of needing a romantic partner or needing more money or needing miraculous improvement, the universe is always going to heap on more of the same. Yes, you need it. Yes, you need it. Yes, you need it until you find your paths out of that. And notice that you do not need our teachings to do that. There are humans all over the planet that have never heard these words spoken by anyone who ultimately find their paths out of it very often after a long period of suffering. And some do not. And it's our promise to you that when you return to your completed state, when you are no longer in physical, you reflect back upon this life experience and appreciation, regardless of how it was experienced from a human perspective. So all of this thinking that you must be in a romantic relationship and you must have a certain flow of money and live in a certain scenario and look a certain way and have a certain level of health and all of these ideas are, are part of the human construct, are, 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 are part of your social programming. And that serves humanity. But you're moving into a period now collectively, and you're all aware of this, where you're questioning that. You're questioning the need for it any longer. You are all moving into more what you may consider esoteric teachings. You are understanding that you are a collective consciousness. You are all connected. You, you, you are all channels. You are all psychics on your own level. You are not necessarily all intending to, to share and have the same level of abilities that some do. But you all have that in you. And you are coming together and communicating in a physical way like never before for humanity. And in doing that, you are questioning. And in the questioning, you are upending your world. And you are all seeing the evidence of it all around you. 
and you're adjusting to it as quickly as it happens. But if you go back in time, David was re recently watching a television program from the 1980s when he was a teenager and, and noting how different the vibration of life was at that time than it is now. Oh, yeah. How charming and simple it seemed, but also understanding that you will never go back to that. Mm. That is not your vibration. You've created this new vibration that you are all collectively adjusting yourselves to. Right. And in doing so, you, you are experiencing some turbulence. But ultimately, those of you that choose to go with the flow of humanity will find yourselves leveling off at an altitude that works for you. So Nasha follows up. Uh, she was asking for more information about self-love. And she says, to love myself, I have fallen in love with myself. But like I said, I'm having an affair with myself. I guess that will go all right. So while falling in love, one should, shouldn't should look for love. One shouldn't be looking for love. The, the, it's important to understand that that you don't have to look for anything. That, that, that when you are in a state of joy and appreciation of all that is, a magical life experience will manifest for you. It will find you, including other beings with whom you resonate. Enjoy the magical journey of life for what it is and, and, and move yourselves, if you so choose, out of that need vibration and, 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 and start to peel away the layers of human judgment. We are speaking of this very often. We have delivered a set of teachings to David based on peeling away the layers of an onion because there is so much judgment woven into the collective consciousness of humanity, so much fear-based judgment. When you start to peel away these layers then you start to get really, really, really clear. And as you peel away the layers of all of the programming that you have subjected yourselves to and allowing any of it that you wish to allow, there, there is no right or wrong way for you to operate your lives from our perspective, but just see it for what it is. Recognize that the idea of pairing off in, 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 a, in a couple, uh, especially an opposite gender couple, and, 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 and getting a piece of paper that says that you're together forever and producing your children and, and living a life in a certain way is rooted in a lot of programming. And you can certainly choose to live your lives that way and be very joyous if you choose to do so. But when you're judging your lack of that against that template, against that layer of judgment, when you peel that layer of judgment away and you're no longer judging your worthiness or your happiness or your joy or your experiencing of your life based on someone else's idea of what perhaps you should be doing, then you experience a joy like you have never experienced before. And when you are in that state of joy and appreciation of all that is, you become a very appealing being to others who are at that vibrational frequency. Yeah, that's the key right there. Everything else takes care of itself. Yeah, that's really the key. Absolutely. The money, the relationships, the health, all of it just becomes a journey that you're moving through very magically, which isn't magic at all. It seems like magic very often when you're new to it, but you become magical. And we guide you to appreciate that magic because you're all capable of it. We're getting uh, very positive comments in the, uh, the live stream section. First of all, Carol Moore saying good morning from Australia. Thanks for tuning in from Australia. We really appreciate that. Thanks for joining us today. And and Tiber jumping and saying, love you, David. Thank you in the stream. This is amazing. I love seeing life unfold. There have been so many ways things have manifested by waiting on source to show me all the ways that things can manifest. So very cool stuff. Dean, you've been really quiet, which is kind of unusual for you, but uh, I'm curious, got any questions or comments you want to throw in here? I, I'm just taking it all in, Walt. It's uh, This is just amazing. I just love it. And I've just been sitting back and, and taking in all the streams. Uh, I mean... It's cool, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I, I love it. I love it's it. It's like talking to Abraham, but with like a little bit of right. a gritty twist to it, which is really yeah. cool. I love yeah. it. I always loved it very much too. Stream, let's go to a, a, a slightly different topic. This is one that uh, actually popped up in a conversation I had uh, with a friend yesterday who is dealing with uh, some really exciting stuff. She's She's got some really, really cool stuff going on. She's so excited right now though, like when she was trying to describe to me what she was excited about, she couldn't complete her sentences. It's like, you know, it's like being so high vibrational and yet you're just kind of a little bit of out of, out of alignment with yourself that you, you can't even connect to what it is that you're feeling in a way that you can express it. up to a new vibrational flow. It, yeah. It, it is an exhilarating feeling when you all create this, this, this new vibration that begets new creation. And then you find yourselves having to catch up to your new creation. 
and you you believe that you create the vibration so you're completely ready for it when it appears. The only thing that holds you back from the readiness of it is that little bit of vibrational dust that is still creating a, a shadow of doubt. Will it or will it not manifest? And then when it actually materializes for you, you're in awe of it. But that is actually a very high vibration. You, again, you are moving up through some turbulence to a higher altitude. And you all level up. And, and, and the, the thing to, to remember with all of this is as you level up in vibration, you are a different being in that new vibration than you were in the old vibration. And, and, and we are speaking in linear time of a matter of days. You change your state of being. Mm -hmm. Think you are, are in, in, in a lower vibrational state of, of, of thought. And you were down in that, that muck a little bit. You cannot even recall sometimes what it was like when you were up, but you know you have been up. You know you have been higher, but that memory, that recollection of that feeling is not even available to you Yeah, in that space. And then you find yourselves magically back up, and then you cannot even remember what it was like to be down. Or, or you, you begin to rationalize that it was so silly of you to hold yourselves down there for that period of time. This is evidence of this vibrational flow that we speak of. You, you are all moving through it, and there is no cure to it, though you can stop the judgment of it. Mm. A, a lot of you that, that find spiritual teachings and, and find specifically law of attraction teachings may adapt some thoughts that demonize the, the being downtime, that you can't be down. You must be up all the time. You must be at the very top of your spiral at all times. But if you're at the top of your spiral at all times, that is our promise to you that that's no longer the top of your spiral. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> you, you can add on. You can right. continue to build up. And the only way to build up is to dip down, to dip down and experience a little disconnection, create some obstacle for yourselves. And in that obstacle, finding appreciation for that obstacle takes you right back up. And when you allow yourselves to go back up and then look back fearlessly on whatever triggered you down in the first place and solve that by finding newfound appreciation for the process, if not newfound appreciation for the trigger itself. You can solve these triggers for the rest of your human life experience. The things that have triggered you down throughout your lifetime, you can learn because what occurs is, is, is you, 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 are, you are in reasonably high vibration. You, you have a trigger rooted in something that you've experienced in your past and your ego takes you down, mm -hmm. shuts you down because the ego is separating you from new creation in that moment to protect itself. There is a, there, there is a reason to that madness. And then polarity, or maybe you do a bit of work, meditation, or, or something that brings your vibration back up. What you tend to do is not want to reflect back on that. You, you are in such relief and feeling better that you just want to move forward. But you can all build a toolkit to, from that higher vibrational vantage point, understand that in that higher vibrational state, reflect back on the trigger itself from that high vibration and no longer be triggered by it. Get clarity on what triggered you down, what the root of that was. And when you find the silver lining in that root, when you find appreciation for it, you detune it. And you make that appreciation for that old transgressor, your new reflection on that experience, whatever it was, a person, a circumstance, an event, it does not matter. When you find appreciation for the things that you're told not to appreciate, you begin to detune your transgressors. And in doing that, you're detuning the things that trigger you down. And then before long in doing this work, you're not going down your spiral as much. You're spending less time stuck down there. You're living more joyously and thus more abundantly because you're not going down there creating all these obstacles all the time. And because you feel better in your now, you are not needing the relationship or the pile of money or the, the, the perfect body or whatever it is that your belief system has told you that you need to be joyous. And, and what you're saying is wonderful. I love the fact too that you're bringing up the transgressors. I know that's a big part of the Taya boot camp and, and what you've taught in so many of the episodes that you've been on here on the show. Um, I just want to revisit once again, that one particular issue that my friend has been dealing with, which was, and this is not a bad thing. I wouldn't, I don't want to create this like this is some sort of terrible issue that has to be resolved. That's not where I'm going with it. I'm simply pointing out that 
it's disorienting when you get to that very high vibration to the point where you, you, you forget things like how to think, how to talk, how to express yourself. And so I'm looking for how can, when, when we're in that place, we're kind of disoriented. How can we regain our orientation? What, what's the best you're, way for you're, to do you're that? You're catching up to the new reality of it. Enjoy that, that, that new altitude. Just and, do the enjoyment part. Simply enjoy yeah. the process of the new altitude okay. that you're catching up to. Mm -hmm. it, it's part of the expansion process. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you work for a long time to manifest something and in, in, in your, your, your 3D reality, it seems like work. You've put a lot of effort in through the process of creation. You stop judging the amount of time that it takes to create and reflect back and be joyous of the process that you that took to get you there. Mm -hmm. And then when the new thing arrives and you are so giddy and excited about it and you can't even speak because your vibration is so high and, and you are right. moving such a fast stream, enjoy that manifestation of that level of excitement. Okay. You are experiencing the, 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 the child's Christmas morning over and over again throughout your lifetime if you so allow this new gift that you've manifested for yourselves, the, the very excitement of it being something that is moving so fast that you can't even catch up to the words. When David is sharing our message, sometimes he stutters and people want to know what the stutter is. It's because there is so much flowing so fast that he is trying <laughs> to catch up to what we are offering him. That is why. And we guided him to stop judging that. Allow others to judge it if they so desire, but to stop judging his presentation of our information. It's perfection in the way that it is flowing and it's meeting the audience that is ready for it. But don't expect perfection in leveling off of the new higher vibration that is source. It is our promise to you, no matter how much work you do, no matter how much clarity you gain in your lives of your eternal state of being and in love of self and worthiness, there is no ceiling. There is no ceiling for you in this, this enlightening process, if you will. You, th th there's clarity upon clarity upon clarity upon clarity. There are levels of, of, of joy and abundance that have not yet been attained in your environment. Endless. And as you as you allow them to come to be, there takes a bit of a, a period of adjustment for you as you, you are allowing the, the realization of that for yourselves. It, it, is, it is an exciting, very high vibrational energy for all of you. And clearly Dave is taking it to heart too, because I'm comparing this session to the last one we did, which is about four months ago. The stuttering is dramatically reduced. So apparently he is going into it with uh, much less of a, of a judgmental approach and, and just going with it because it's working. It's working really great. The, the flow is beautiful today. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left in the session, maybe 10 to 15 minutes left. If you are on the live stream and you had a question you wanted to include, this is a good time to put it into the chat session because we won't be able to uh, keep going endlessly with this. Uh, David actually has another engagement he has to go to right at the top of the hour and we'll want to uh, help him disengage before we get to that point. So this is a, a kind of like last call, so to speak, if you're in the live stream and you have a question or a comment you want to I, I actually have one question I Go uh, for it. was brought up, uh, the stream brought up. And and I was kind of curious, when we talk about raising our vibration, right, or trying to maintain that high vibration that we, in this 3D world, try to aspire to, right, uh, even though it's part of us, um, why does it hurt uh, for some of us um, throughout the process of, of uh, raising our light body or that vibration, maybe early on in our development, I'll call it, um, you know, a lot, I call it energy sickness. A lot of people have different <laughs> terms for it, but where the light becomes so much or the energy, sometimes you'll actually, people will actually vomit. Some people get all kinds of crazy uh, ailments. Um, why does it hurt? Why, why does it happen? Your physical body is adjusting to the new higher vibrational flow. And, and, and we describe your physical vehicles, your bodies, as filtration systems. You, you, your physical body is a creation of technology that sustains your, your earth environment. So your physical body is, 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 is absorbing the environment and filtering through the environment. And as you do this work to, to come back into your natural state of being, which is source connection, which is abundance, you, you are often experiencing a vibrational shift that, that shifts the very core of your physical being. 
the very core of your, 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 your physical apparatus and even your human consciousness because it is so dramatically different than the operating system that you projected into. But it was your soul's desire to project into a path that gave you the potential to experience this. So in the process of creation, this high and low vibration, the creating the things that you need to create to have what you may call the awakening experience is all about taking your vibration up and up and up and up and up. But the more you take your vibration higher, the more every little dip down can be very uncomfortable for you. And in the judgment of the uncomfortable period, you can send yourselves on a downward spiral. But notice that the spiritual awakening process, you are not hearing stories of it ending anyone's human life experience. It, because you've got the tools to, when you go down, to find your paths back up. But once again, it's creating the more perfect version of your awakening process. It's making you appreciate it even more. This has occurred to David at, at two different times in his life. Uh, one so severely, he was told to go to the hospital, but knew that that was not the path for him. Very recently, two people in his mastery program have gone through such a physical. One ended up in the ER via ambulance. And they could not diagnose anything. And, and within a day or two, she was fine. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's when the fear sets in around it and the downward spiral occurs and takes you further down there to that depth. And since you were used to flying at a higher altitude, that depth is even more uncomfortable. And then you add a little fear back into that. You, you get below neutral and you are recycling old fearful thoughts. You, you have this thing that we playfully refer to as vibrational dust. You clear an old vibration, but there's still some dust remaining of it. And it takes a little bit of time and practice and linear time for you to completely clear all that dust out and get more comfortable with your new higher altitude of operation. And then the plummets aren't so severe and the, the uh, physical aspects of all of that are not manifesting themselves. It, it, it is a sign of your what you may label an awakening process when your body has that sort of havoc wreaked upon it and you have the physical manifestations, but you notice as soon as you find appreciation for the process, you move out of it. All right. We have time, I think, for one more question for the stream to address. This is actually coming from Amy, part of our LOA Today team. She says, when we have a repeating pattern of behavior and want to change it, but seem to keep hitting a roadblock, how do we get past that? The, the most important work that you can do in, in what we are guiding you to is when you have a behavior that is not your preference and you understand that it is something that you have tried to change and you find yourselves defaulting back into the old vibration over and over again, that is rooted in what we call transgressor energy. A transgressor is any unwanted person, circumstance, or event in your life or anything that you cannot look upon in full appreciation in your now. These are the things that create your triggers. The very often are things that happen in early childhood that as an adult, you rationalize that you have moved beyond. But if you were reflecting back and whatever occurred at age three, four, five, or anywhere around there still causes pain, you are not fully appreciating it. It's still active for you. That negative vibration, that negative experience is still recurring again and again and again and again in your subconscious mind. And it creates what we refer to as your abundance blocks. So when you have something that you are stuck in, if, it, if you're stuck in not enough money or stuck in a, a body type that is not your preference, then look at the transgressor energy around it. Why do you think you've created that? You have all the answers of, of how you create these things. So think about how that could have been created in your life. What did you absorb, especially early on, that served as the, the root of that transgressor energy? And dive into that and detune that through a process of appreciation for what it's done for you. Because all of these recurring themes of unwanted things are providing an opportunity for you to grow as a human being and as an eternal consciousness being. So the, the, the work sounds complex on the surface, what we teach is actually very, very simple because it is natural for you all to remove fear and judgment from every equation, every experience that you've had. Think of how many things that you were judging as negative because your society tells you they were negative. The absent father, the too much weight, the not enough money as a child, 
the, the not being popular in school, all of these painful things. Are they painful because they're painful? Or are they painful because you're living in a society that programs you that you must have these things to be joyful and worthy? Peel all that away. Do that work. And you will see yourselves beginning to, to change these patterns because they're all rooted somewhere or you wouldn't have them. They were your creation. Find appreciation for them and they will dissipate. Amy observes, uh, wow, it goes back to yesterday's podcast that she and I did on the topic of forgiveness. She said, thanks so much for the discussion about transgressor energy, because that really hits it right on the right on, on the, the head, which is which is fabulous. Stream, I mean, I, I missed talking with you. This has been great. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. We, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the source energy. We appreciate the energy you bring to the program. And uh, we'll look forward to having you back again uh, sometime soon. Meanwhile, we'll ask you to uh, reconnect David to us so we can finish up the conversation with him but dean i mean this is you got a taste of it right. wow right. This, this is pretty good stuff right right i'm so very grateful to to have not only david but the stream with us today and uh yeah just been taking it all in like I said so it's kind of like whoosh, yeah there's a lot to pick in right i mean it's just like boom, okay here's all the information boom here we go <laughs> love it but it's fun. As usual, I always ask David afterward, how much of that do you re recall? Because I know you, you get little bits and pieces of it, but I'm curious to know how much you actually remember. Uh, not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of confused. Uh, and I was always surprised that my coffee is ice cold and not hot. like <laughs> uh, Not a whole lot today. Uh, things, yeah. things will pop back in, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's just kind of depends on the interaction the day. I always know... Um, you know, it, 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 I love coming on here because you get to just dive into the questions and there's not this big monologue for them. And they're always sort of just ready to go. Here we go. So I do remember that part Okay. Uh, from the beginning and the end, but the middle part of it, uh, I don't recall. It's just a blur. Part. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, we do want to take a moment to once again uh, reiterate what you're doing with uh, your special event on Saturday. Also, uh, we were talking earlier about... Uh, the the diff there are differences between Thai boot camp and Thai mastery, and I just want you to address that a little bit. What what is Thai boot camp for people who aren't familiar with that? What is Thai mastery? Well, How do they all tie together? Thai is a, a a practice. It's the practical application of the streams teachings, and we mm -hmm. teach Thai everywhere all the time. Uh, the Stream of David podcast, the Taya Practice Facebook group, we teach it all over the place. Uh, and then for people that are ready to come and work with me and the Taya coaches for a block of time, it's a 12-week program, and really make this your way of life, then we have Taya Boot Camp. And it is boot camp because it kicks your ass. It really <laughs> kicks your ass. And I have to remind people in there all the time, I'm like, I told you it was a boot camp. I didn't say it was going to have fun for 12 weeks. It's it, it's very fun and joyous, and it's very deep work because you're detuning your transgressors. You're learning to really manage, uh, not manage, but be, note your vibration. Uh, you learn tools to move up. You learn tools to, to do all sorts of things. We don't graduate you from Taya Boot Camp until you know the practice as your way of life if you choose to use it for the rest of your life. And you've seen evidence in your life. So if you haven't seen shifts in your life, then you don't graduate. I just had someone I graduated this morning and she had a couple of transgressors that were in close proximity to her. And during her boot camp, they both moved out of state to different places. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Falana. Her testimonial is coming out next week. You know, she's the one that I re reference a lot. Her son was murdered. And it oh, took yeah. five years to extradite the, the murderer from uh, New Jersey back to Washington State. Mm. And she got into boot camp because she was tired of being the mother of a murdered child. She just wanted to be the mother of her son in his now state. Mm -hmm. And she worked. She did all the work. It was it was incredible what she did. The extradition happened while she was in boot camp. Wow. And then she wow. faced it in a whole different mindset. Not joy. I'm not pretending like that for a second. Sure. But she managed it very differently as a result of that. And then you're, you're going to cry at her testimonial. It's, it's, so, I'm about to start right now. It's uh, so moving what this woman has done with her life. Yeah. So that's what boot camp is. It's for people. You don't have to have anything that tragic, obviously. There's people with all sorts of different uh, things coming in uh, that want a new operating system for their lives. And then when you graduate Taya Boot Camp, then you can join Taya Mastery. And Taya Masters are for people, uh, Taya Mastery is for people that want to take Taya to the highest level in their lives and work with me in a mastermind setting for a whole year. So Dan, our, our mutual friend, Dan Mangina, right. he graduated Taya Bootcamp and now he's just joined Taya Mastery. So we're very excited to have him as a Taya Master. Uh, he showed up, he just joined, he you know, dove right into our first meeting. And right now he's probably like, what did I get into? 
if, if anybody can handle it, it's Dan. It, it's really up there, but he he's going to add a lot to it. Yeah. He, you know, he he is already a master himself. So uh, having his input in that that mastermind group is just going to be phenomenal for the practice. Absolutely. Happy to have him. There. And, and reiterate again what the Saturday's event is all about. And Saturday we're doing a, a live workshop. It's going to be a lot more free flowing than boot camp. Uh, so if you want to learn more about the Taya practice and hear more of the stream's teachings and even have an opportunity to perhaps uh, commune face to face with them, you can purchase a ticket. Uh, we'll have the link uh, in the comments here. The link is also set up in the Taya practice Facebook group or the stream of David Facebook page. You can purchase a ticket. You can come hang out with us for four hours. It's a four hour uh, workshop. We're not broadcasting it. It's going to be on Zoom. So you'll be in a Zoom meeting with us for four hours. We're going to take a couple of breaks. I'll be on with the Taya Masters, so you'll be learning some things from all of them and a whole lot of channeling from the stream. And uh, like I said, I'm not guaranteeing that everybody's going to be able to be called up. Uh, but if you are called up, then you can be face to face uh, with the stream. Ask your questions. I get follow up questions for clarity. And if everybody comes in with the right intention, we're going to do a big guided meditation at the beginning of it so that every question gets answered, whether you get called up or not. And we all know how that works. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that works a big way. No doubt about it's that. It's going to be a lot of fun and super high vibes. Yeah. Very cool. I like that. That's really, really good. I, I have to ask you one thing. I mean, yes, you mentioned you, you're going to take a couple of breaks on Saturday, but four hours. I mean, if you take the breaks out of there, that, that's like three, three and a half hours of, of steady stream work. That's got to like, we'll wipe you, like you take the day off. That's after. Why I, do you do? I fall out, then they can all just take over and start. <laughs> there you go. I've gone over two hours. I've channeled for over two hours before, uh, but not for four. So we're going yeah. like, to what, what's that's the guy cool. that buries himself under the concrete and to see if he can survive <laughs> <laughs> the illusionist. I'm going to see if I can, if I can channel for four solid hours. We'll see. I, I, I great. We're going to take breaks. We'll go and come back, you know. D Dean, you have the military background. When he was talking about uh, what the Taya boot camp is, is all about, did you have any flashbacks? I'm kind of curious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I totally get what he's talking about. So, yeah, so it's – it. Uh... Yeah, that's exciting. That's awesome stuff. It'll be uh it'll be earth earth uh, you know, earth or life changing. That's the words I'm I can't even think of words right now, but yeah. <laughs> well, that happens a lot. Your, your, your military boot camp, your transgressors were probably more front and center for you. Well, right? they weren't really my transgressors. They were oh, really, good. you know, you know, so they weren't my enemies. So, um that didn't come until later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they always have a tendency to, to pop up at the times we least expect. It the doesn't matter whether you have a military right. background. Yeah, yeah, and, and and often it seems at that point in time, from our perspective, it's when they're least welcome. But uh, we don't realize we're actually getting something good at that time. Yeah, it's good stuff. But David, I mean, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming back to join us. Always, and, always fun to be here, Dean. So nice meeting you. And, and same here. Questions. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity. And we're going to have you back in in May. I know I don't remember which Tuesday it is, but you're coming back for I'll, Tuesday in May. Probably so. before the end of May, about three or four weeks from now, I think. Yeah, so that's going to be something to look forward to. So we'll let you go because we know you got another event to to get to. So we'll we'll say goodbye to David. And we'll just do a little quick uh, sign off with Dean. Dean, we, we we're going to get back to doing the uh, the, the psychic uh, uh, experiments last next week. And sure. I don't know if you you've given any thought to it. Um, I realized you you brought up uh, last time you brought up uh, your your um, uh, oracle cards, and I realized I got a deck of of cards too that Louise and I almost never use. So I'm going to pull that out. That's going to be my thing. Have you given any thought to what you're going to bring into it? I I haven't. Um, I'm just going to go with the flow and then uh, okay. trust that. Uh, now my computer is going all haywire, but um, evidently the, well, it's the, the high energy. energy. That's what yeah. right. It's like, it, it whoa, what's gotten there right now? Now it's stabilized. Um, but uh, yeah, so for sure, we'll. Uh, I haven't really given a lot of thought to it. And I'm All not, right. Well, you know, well, I'm not right. giving myself an ulcer thinking we've, about we've it. Good. good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. That's really good. And we got a week to deal with it. So no big deal. So I'm not yeah, it's, gonna, it's all going to be good. So thank you very much, especially to our live streamers for all those great yes. questions. They're really, really thank good. You. Obviously, the stream was just flying with them. And uh, thank you to our podcast listeners, without whom we would not have a podcast. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>